Hello there, this is Off the Press, where we'll bring you the major headlines from the National Dailies. And I am Amaka Okoye. With me in the studio this morning to analyze the headline and dissect national issues is our very own Ekene. <laughs> Ekene, thank you for coming up this morning. My pleasure, as always. And then, uh, Ekene, there are so many stories here making the headlines. Um, so, let's begin from the punch. The Punch newspaper will be our first paper here for review, and it says electricity tariffs grow threefold in four years. On page 23, Lagos Assembly probes Ambody over 45 billion naira vehicle purchase. On page 19, Nigeria a laughing stock in oil business. The minister says on page 26, and um, we are challenging UK's courts. Uh, UK courts 9.6 billion naira billion dollars judgment in US. The federal government is saying that. And then Buhari orders EFCC NIA to probe 2010 controversial contract based on this, I believe. Deal was designed to fill Abinicio, says AGF Malami. And then judgment and assault on everyone, the Nigerian finance minister says. And we have down here a very sad one. Three die, 69. That's a lot, a lot. 69 people injured as truck crushes on BRT bus. That's on page four and five. And then seven bodies found, 108 rescued in capsized boat, again, page seven of the Punch newspaper. And panic as suspected serial killers invade Ibadan. That's on page four and five of this newspaper. And then Southwest strategizes for security outfits takeoff. On page nine, why we hiked Nigerians' applicants' visa fees. Ekene, mm -hmm. that's U.S. saying on page 39. This mm -hmm. morning I read that news. And then mm -hmm. policeman arrested <laughs> for battering future female student. That's on page 5. And then page 19, police grill Fato Imbo for hours and then granted him bail on page 19. There are no good news this morning, Ekene, it seems. There, there is, actually. Is there? At least I found a couple. OK. <laughs> we'll get there okay. when, we, when we go through okay. these papers. They're, they're not on the punch so far. OK. Uh, obviously, let's deal with the one, uh, the, the most prominent the one, the mm -hmm. 9.6 billion. Yeah. You know, we started discussing before we came on air. And mm. my perspective is that we tend to do a kind of reactionary Response mm. and it's not going to it's not a, it's not going to cut it this time around because uh, if we are observant we'll notice that the court awarded um, judgment against assets in the UK because they know they and can the enforce US. it and in the US so we can't play jungle justice as we do here mm. over there you know well why did we not choose to probe this before it went to judgment are mm. we saying we weren't aware they hadn't issued us some sort of a uh, some kind warning. of warning yeah because or you have notice. to serve a notice mm. to say look i'm going to take you to court and i'm sure even before then they had started making noise and saying look we're not happy we're going to you know we're making threats so it that, didn't that follow us the, that was the time to probe it mm. not when you've had a, a court ruling against you it's slightly you know you're, you're sort of i don't know the horse has bolted in that case and mm. the clock is ticking and and this time it's against our own, do you say, our bank account, the national bank account. That's correct. Because they say that the amount being levied against us is one-fifth of the national foreign reserves. So it's a hefty sum. We can't afford to play the kind of games we play here mm. on this kind of an issue. I hope this isn't going to be a landmark case. I also... If we don't, you know, because actually why I'm even being so, you know, wary of the way we're approaching it is where I read that... Um, the company that are bringing the case against us has said, look, yeah, even yeah. now they're willing for us to come to the table and negotiate. And negotiate. Mm. So there is room to, and it, but if we continue, and they anticipated that we'll continue with this response, they're already going identifying assets. So I think we need to recognize that the world doesn't operate the way we operate and, In, and begin uh, to, you know, rise our own up system and do things does properly. Not, uh, yeah. quite Sorry, I seem to be assuming we're, no. we're in the wrong camp here, <laughs> yeah, but that's the, the but trail that's what, seemingly, uh, that, that's what it appears to be. And see, the, the finance minister, this, I mean, the news, she said that yesterday, that this is going to be an assault on every Nigerian, and then, you know, we're going to, Nigerians, the common person is going to He's be going the to one feel to, the pain. to feel the pain, because this is a hefty amount of money we are talking about. And I do hope uh, we either sit at the negotiating table or find a way to resolve this because the country... Very, very soon. Uh, all right. So um, Lagos Assembly probes Ambody over 45 billion uh, Naira vehicle purchase. He, he, he got the buses, yeah? He got mm, the again, You know, I just, I, I can't help feeling that there is a bit of an ambush 
against Tambode if it doesn't sound like a mm -hmm. pun. You know, because um, not recently we saw that the DSS had gone to his house yes, um, and was blocked by the, the people in the community. Mm -hmm. Yes, you could say they were rallied. But the point is, there seems to be a witch hunt approach. I, I know they're trying very hard to make it look like it's mm -hmm. not. And now we have the House of Assembly talking about buses that were ordered, apparently over 800 buses. Yeah, they state that when they, when he, he was made, to get 5,000, but he got about 800, 800 yeah, yeah, over 800. Mm. So he had apparently asked for, you know, a certain amount of money, I think uh, 7 million and another 26 million towards the purchase of these buses, and he was refused. Mm. Um, but they say he then went, he still went ahead and, and did what he did. And, but my own concern is that there seems to be an element of pettiness that, that is costing us, again, going back to this 9.6 billion, mm -hmm. you know, um, because these buses apparently have been there for over a year. And you can imagine any, anybody who understands demorage and cost implications of leaving buses, not to mention the wear and tear yeah. on the engine, the tires, you're still more concerned with getting your own back at somebody a year later. This is a bus, the, the, the project concerning the buses was um, launched by the president. He came and yes. he was commissioned. So we're mm. saying, you know, is it valid or is it not valid? Is it legitimate or is it not? And uh, we, we just want the buses on the road. Mm. Um, yes, we're happy for you to follow due process, but not in a very selective way. Yeah. You know, because um, how many of them are saints that are coming against him? I completely agree. Uh, then we have this story here. Three die and 69 injured. Apparently, this BRT convey a lot of people. If they had, this is 69 and then this is three, that's about 72 persons. That's quite a lot. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's, that's good. I didn't realize. That. Yeah, so yeah. that's what it is. Because he says three die, if all of them, we believe, are from the bus, yes, or, yes. That's, that's a lot. That's quite a lot. And, you know, like I was telling you again before we came on air, um, this makes me very suspicious of our news reporting. Um, yeah. Because the obvious thing they should have told us from the beginning is that the bus was a dangote. Bus. Yeah. The truck was the, the Dangote truck bus. Was Dangote the Dangote truck. And, and, and one of the, the more important issues there, so you don't blame it entirely on the driver, is that it had a brake failure. So we're talking about maintenance. Which one had the, the brake? Dangote the Dangote truck. It, like, yeah, it suffered a brake failure. And that was why it had Around no option but to phone. swerve onto the lane of the BRT bus causing this. So there's mm. complete negligence here, if not manslaughter. So you, it needs to be taken all the way back to Dangote and dumped at his feet. But I just feel that sometimes we have this respect of persons, mm -hmm. even when it comes to reporting news. Why don't you just state the obvious? I mean, I think Punch, when you go onto the inner page and you read the story, they actually mention Dangote. But the nation, when you see them, they don't at all, even in the mention the names of, not of once the truck. they mentioned that it was owned by Dangote. Were it any other company, I'm sure they would have no problem. But I can yeah. I'm saying, it, thanks to citizen uh, journalism this day, you know, because before this was even published, yesterday we've seen visuals, you know of, of um, the scene, what happened, yes. and people can read. Yes. It, because initially, w w what normally happens is as soon as these things happen, they move, the trucks are moved. You don't even know which one is involved. So you don't you get know. to take pictures. You don't, get, you don't even get to take pictures. In, yeah. But much as we know that, of course, the citizen journalism has its own uh, negative side, but yeah. somehow it's helping this us is to identify. Plus. I mean, yes, like you said, the negative mm. side was, I, the videos I saw, I felt a bit un unhappy with the fact that they laid these people out on the floor and were videoing them. Yeah, You know, you've heard stories of how people are involved in accidents and rather than help you're busy videoing so it's a bit sad from mm. that perspective but you have to say that if not for the citizens journalism they probably would not have given us the name mm. of the the truck and that's the quite truck un unfortunate so you find that uh, story on pages four and five and we really hope that uh, those who are injured 69 injured uh, will be getting treatment and sadly three uh, people died in that uh, situation then seven bodies found 108 rescued in capsized boats that's on page seven Yes, I uh, heard you say again, because, you know, I, I, recently, even yesterday, I was asking about the capsized boat we had in Lagos, mm. you know, the rec well, recent, about over a month ago, and we're still wondering. I would love to have more information on how far with that, because initially they couldn't wow. identify, the way, I think 22 were missing. Um, so here we have a, another situation of overloading of the, because one of the, uh, one of the people who lost his, his wife and children mm -hmm. said they were coming from Cameroon to, yes, to Calabar, mm -hmm. and he said he saw the boat, it looked a little old, it had about 200 people on it, but it looked like, you know, they've done this journey several times. Why do we keep doing the same thing? Why do mm. we keep putting our lives at risk? And in had danger. they had life jackets, we keep saying the same thing. It's very possible that they would not have suffered this kind of, of um, Cash, trauma. Yeah. Mm, that's unfortunate. Yes, it's important to have the life jackets, really. So we cut, we're cutting mm. corners at the expense mm. of human life. Life, which is unfortunate. So the next paper up for review now is the Vanguard newspaper. Uh, it says... 
Failed gas project again. I can is the uh, nine billion uh, nine billion uh, dollars fine. Suffering ahead if Nigeria pays the fine. The fine uh, that's the finance minister saying up saying that, and um, as federal government orders probe of multi-million gas project failure, the federal government has said they've said they've started up in, in investigation of the so-called corrupt officials who were uh, who connived in the awarding of this contract. That's so, an offshoot. That's not uh, going to save us from the, from uh, the, um, the situation, mm -hmm. yeah. And then there's no record of P and ID in Nigeria. This is Governor Emefi, uh, the governor of the CBN saying uh, that projects deliberately designed to fail from inception, AGF Malami, all of these people are contributing and making their own input on the same uh, story. Then we have up here, I met Kanu, but not for money to topple Buhari Shawaret tells court. That's on page nine. Mm -hmm. Can I, did you see that story? Goodness me, I was expecting to see it emblazoned across all the newspapers because I read it online and only oh. to come and find that it's being given minimal. Again, I just distrust some of the way we do our journalism, I have to say, uh, because for me, this is a major issue. Mm -hmm. I'm just reading through the more detailed account of Shawaret's defense of himself. He had a much more robust defense than the DSS, unless they haven't bothered to put it, it out there. It. Um, mm. He had all, you know, all the exhibits were listed. His case was marshaled. Of course, Falana is on his case. But mm, still, what it makes you see is that the government comes across as being highly incompetent and just going, Sadly. just just going. The, the, he makes them look like they're, they're raising trumped up charges against him. Because uh, just to give you an example, they say he traveled and, and met with the, um, I think it's Dubai. He went to or, Dubai. And he well, says he he's said never, he he's never been to that country. Since he was surely, born. Surely, even, <laughs> even, even, even a born. child of 15 <laughs> mm. can carry out an investigation and say, has this man been to Dubai or not? Mm. You know, it's not something you hide. So for never. him to say that and mm. they not to even have the evidence to rebuff that or even to even defend it in the first place, Really, there has to be something done against people who bring trumped up charges against individuals. Because mm. as it is, he says he has a sprained ankle. Mm. He's been kept there, uh, you know, under lock and key. His liberties are constrained. And yet you don't even have a viable case against him. Mm -hmm. And you're just making, he's, he's like a circus, really. Yeah, he's saying, uh, he, he, but he agreed to, yes, he met with Kanu. Yes. But he said he didn't, res he, he didn't get any fund, according to him. Yeah, if you check I mean, on page nine, he didn't get any fund to topple the government, as was alleged. So. I, I don't really want to sound like I, mm -hmm. I have a um, holding brief for him. But really, you know, many people have met with Kanu. Mm -hmm. The late um, uh, Kweme met with Kanu and took photos with him. Even um, Fanny F Kayode is bragging that he's met with Kanu and he's, he's his friend. So why not go and lock up everybody who meets with Kanu? That is met that sufficient? Well, I think he's also trying to clear his name to say, yes, I did meet him, but I didn't get any funds. Because their basis is that, oh, he went and collected funds from uh, on, him they to should topple have more, They should the have government. more evidence. That, that's my worry. Is to, it yeah? enough to just say, you know, because all that he's saying that the only evidence they have against him is what he's put out there in the public domain. They don't have the competence to go and get their own evidence. Mm. So because he published that he met with Kanu, we all knew because he published it. Yeah, he they said even it went issued on a his... joint statement. So mm. they don't seem to have any evidence of their own. They're just going on what they what they can grab, it mm. seems. And again, incompetence. There should be more uh, in-depth investigation, if you ask me. So, uh, can I, we woke up to this news of U.S. retaliates, slams new visa charges mm. on Nigerians. I know a lot of people will be concerned about yeah. that one. What but, you know, thoughts, my though? own take is that I think, you know, when you read about um, the U.S. are using language like reciprocity. Mm. So, they're, they're giving they us call back. It reciprocity mm. fee. And they're blaming our government. They said, oh, that they've been asking the government since last year, early last year, that they should ease off on the charges for visa applications for the Americans. And since we haven't, they've slammed us with this one. And it's varied. I think it's bully boy tactics, sorry to say. Um, mm -hmm. Because I just think you're a, big, you're a big country. You can't afford to be doing tit for tat. And when you compare yeah. the volume of people who I'm go from here petty. to America, mm -hmm. as opposed to those who come, you're, you stand to gain. It's a money making you know, gambit as well. So or either way you win. But really, you're just a bully. In my own perception, you mm -hmm. appear that way. Let me not uh, overreach myself. Yeah. So I, I really, yes, it's possible that Nigerians are slightly draconian in the way they levy fees. Because I know some people who are trying to even get citizenship Mm. And they put in fellow Africans who are maybe married Stated. to uh, Nigerians, and they make the process so labyrinthine. Mm. So yes, uh, we do need to look into that. But America should have a better way. They should demonstrate the way forward. You mm -hmm. know, they're much older democracy. They should show us, you know, lead by example. But to do reciprocity. Mm -hmm. Just I'm before not, I came on, there was this other conversation that oh, maybe it's a way to not allow too many of us. Uh, we, that's running. what I thought they would say. And so to <laughs> use the reciprocity <laughs> argument doesn't quite. It sounded doesn't like that's it, but where we can't mm. say. But it feels like that's a, a yes, way to it say. It feels like a penalty against us because of mm, the recent of the, cases. But yeah. um, again, you know, on the other hand, they say that there's um, the cooperation between. 
between um, our people and uh, DSS is yielding some yes. some dividends. Yeah. So that there's an amicable front on yeah, that they side. Said, uh, they've made 28 arrests so far, according mm. to them, and be able to re recover some funds uh, by uh, you know fraud, internet uh, fraudsters. I just want to say for the record that countries as as big and bold as America ought not to approach things in this manner. I think it sets a wrong precedent. Mm. That's the wrong president. All right. Um, then we have again. We have the boat mishap. You find it on page six of the of the Vanguard. Bandits kidnap forty eight in Casina. Burn three army vehicles. You find that on page seven. And uh, Pius Odubu named chairman of new NDDC board. You find that on page twelve also. Lagos Assembly, we've talked about it, the mm. bosses, Ambody. the Ambode bosses. <laughs> and then there's uh, here also on page eight, you find police quiz and release Kosa Pastor Fato Yimbo on bail. Should did you see that story? That? <laughs> Um, I did. I mean, I, I guess again, it's weird. I, I, I know. You see, uh, you, I you're distrustful of mm. the way they've coined it. I mean, because they well, phrased it, they weird. grilled him for hours. Yes. It sounds like we're learning how to play the media and game. And they say he came in late, and mm. because he and came then in they late, keep him overnight, oh, and you know, and then they had to send out it. So they're trying to impress us, and, and just to show you that they're conscious of what image they're projecting. Mm -hmm. They say people have said that we haven't, you know, done enough. It. So now look at us. Can you see us? Carpet. We're questioning him. Yes, and then I was intentional yesterday. They, they, they said it was intentional that they brought him last into mm -hmm. the investigation mm -hmm. because people have been saying, why didn't mm -hmm. they bring him for questioning? Well, like they say, as people say, the, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. Mm -hmm. when, when the dust finally settles, let's see what all this grilling w amounts will, will to. reveal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you find that again on page 8 of the Vanguard newspaper and up next for review is the Nation newspaper. Again, the Nation has uh, the truck, the Dangote and BRT accident. They, they don't call it by uh, name. Uh, well, that's what it is. <laughs> Even if it's not, it's just written there. The paper has it, mm -hmm. the truck and the BRT here. So three die as truck crashes into BRT in Lagos. You find that sad story on page four of the Nation newspaper as displayed on your screen. And then again, we have almost the same story running across. Uh, house probes and bodies purchase of 820 buses. You find it on page eight of Nation. And police squeeze Koza past of Fato Imbo. You find that on page five. Nigerians, all of these papers have almost I mean, the but same. the Ambode one, just to be fair, okay. you know, it's not to say we know everything, because mm -hmm. it may be that there, there are things there are he did sides. that are, are worthy of proof. But why they've muddied the waters for us is that they're coming across as if they're going after him mm. by way of a, a witch hunt. Like, we'll he's out that. of favor, now we'll go after him. I wish we were much less, much more subtle, much more subtle and much... Uh, more diplomatic. I'm not sure what the word is. Professional. Probably Professional. that's the word. Mm. In the way we go about these things so that we everything is laid bare and there's a consistency, there's a kind of objectivity mm. and there's more transparency. And so if it runs across board so it doesn't feel like... Yeah, actually, it does, but again, you know... Uh, yeah, sorry. You know, they came up to say that uh, it's not winch hunt. The first time his house was um, yes, uh, raided. And yes. Well, they said it wasn't raid <laughs> and they said it's due process. Yes. That this is uh, what they do uh, for every other uh, official in government, you okay. know, is due uh, process in terms of probing and investigation. Yes, so after all, they went to we, a Sandra's library. Mm -hmm. yeah. Again, so we hope it's due process. Yeah, and because we want to be able to have respect process. for the law and, and, and due process. Mm. So against uh, Nigeria launches battle against 9.6 billion UK verdicts. So I wonder what battle it is. Yes, I wonder what battle it is. Well, they, they, this morning uh, from yesterday, um, the governor, uh, the Malami himself, and the finance minister, they said investigation. They've started or efforts are being made. If I use their words, efforts okay. are being made to see that it ends well. Okay. But I hope it will be good, good to advice. know. Yes. That's my, my my angle. I hope they get because a lot of times when we we see the act activities we undertake and then we measure it up against international standards. It's, it's as if we're playing in a small pond, fishes mm. in a small pond. So wow. I hope we realize that this is an international case mm. and we need to step up our game, get as much advice as we need to get, understand what the, the weight of evidence against us and know the that the clock is evidence. ticking. Yeah. We can't play games. Mm. And much as they say uh, efforts are being made, it would be good to know what concrete efforts those are, you know. Mm. So it doesn't just sound like a play of words. And then minister says it will inflict grave economic injury on Nigerians. Yes, we do know yeah. and that's why action needs to be it's taken, taken yeah. and the federal government probes contracts and, and again bring to book uh, the corrupt officials that connived, uh, you know, yes. in the process. Even though I suspect that even if you brought them to book, they can't afford to help you with that 9.6 well, billion dollars. Uh, that, that's true. <laughs> but it would be better than not having anything, you know, so 
it better not but go you, the, under Don't the, you want to ask the question also is, these corrupt officials, it they? took a foreign court to make, it's a bit like the Bori situation, mm -hmm. took a foreign court to alert you to the fact that you were being played. It suggests that it was permissible until it became something that was, you know, um, mm -hmm. indictable. So you, you allowed it to wash. They were doing, you know, do me, everybody's taking their own piece of the national cake until it had Sadly. a price tag attached to it. Then mm -hmm. you sat up and now you're probing them. And this is a huge one. Uh, it's a huge price tag here. Mm -hmm. So at the back of the nation newspaper, you have uh, the columnist there, Louis Odion, the, the bottom line, he calls it hitting the national call again. Uh, there's a picture of the president, Buhari, and uh, Professor Yemi Oshibajo. Please get the nation newspaper, a back page, to find out what that conversation is about. And then we have here, up next is This Day. This Day Nation, uh, This Day newspaper rather says FBI indictment, EFCC arrest 28 recovers 468 million naira. So this so is the sort success. of good news, isn't it? Mm -hmm. <laughs> this is the success, the success story that we are mm -hmm. talking about. That mm -hmm. they are, they are collaboration. Yes, uh, it's yielding some some dividends. It's yielding something. So I hope we're not being precipitate in announcing it though, because only last week we heard about the uh, the about list. The way, so it, it, already yes. this week. <laughs> Can I, yes, everybody's for a becoming moment, very media savvy. Uh, that's mm -hmm. one, and for a moment, I thought, Oh, that's really fast, not dismissing their efforts. Mm -hmm. no. But if they could do this, this fast, it's not up to two weeks, mm -hmm. and they're already making this recovery. What stopped us from them from discovering that all of these things are going on even before now? Did you know, we sometimes need you get FBI? the feeling that, um, I, I'm not sure if this is a good thing or a bad thing. Mm -hmm. I guess it has both sides, it could be good, it could be bad. Mm -hmm. People are very aware of the public perception of, of their activities, mm -hmm. so a lot of times they're, they're playing to the gallery. So a bit like the Fatou Yimbo grilling for hours, they're conscious of because now everything, like even the case, I, I know we didn't talk on that much, of the police officer yeah. that um, you know beats up this girl to the mm. point where her eye was and she managed to upload it on Twitter and kept pointing see my eye if you read the language it, they're hedging their bets they're trying very hard to make cover up so mm. um, on the one hand they say well that this girl actually it was because they were drunk and the police officer tried to search them and she refused to be searched that he then pushed her slightly and because she was drunk she fell and injured her eye but nonetheless he'll be punished mm. why do you punish a police officer for pushing her slightly if you don't suspect that he injured her mm. you're trying to make sure that on all fronts you're covered well, and you careful. know that the world is watching because mm. now there's social media and so you have it with you know cases like this as well there's a mm. consciousness that you're watching them and they're to some extent playing to the galleries Hmm. Okay. So, and that's it. Uh, this day we have, I'll just quickly run, CBM bans bills for collection for importation of milk. You find that on page eight. And the FG, again, Nigeria asset not imminent danger, hopefully. That's on, still on the 9.6 billion issues. And on the back page, again, uh, Ruben Abati, remembering Adebowale Adefuye. Please grab this day nation, uh, this day newspaper oh, sorry, there was good pardon. news you had asked me about good um, news and i forgot i think we've we've skimmed over it the one mm -hmm. about the neko results oh yes uh, there's, Can I there's saw been it? an increase yes. in terms of performance yeah. and they've, uh, they've caught out more people who are indulging in malpractice yes two and, states uh, were mentioned i think yeah. kastina uh Ogun also they were asked and also blind students i think mm. about 22 blind students were able to sit the exam. Mm. All right, thank you very much, Ekene. It's good to wrap up on a good note mm. with the good news of the NECO results. Please, uh, we have the Complete Sports. We oblige ask you to please grab your own copy of Complete Sports to know what is happening today in, uh, in the world of sports. And that will be it on Off the Press. Thank you for being with me this morning on this show where we dissect the issues from the National Dailies. And thank you very much, Ekene, as well, for having this conversation My with pleasure. me. And that will be the end for Off the Press. We'll see you again this time tomorrow, 8.30, here on Plus TV Africa. And I am Amaka Okoye.